And uh, good afternoon, everybody. I know it's, uh, it's tough after the lunch break to, uh, to get the energy uh, level up and running. Um, there are a few things that resonated quite well in the previous conversation. One was uh, the sandwich in the, scan do in the documents that need to be scanned. Certainly have seen that and, and some other things as well that were not supposed to be in the documents that need to be scanned. Uh, the other thing that resonated was uh, hope equals, uh, or hope being the, um, the biggest competitor. Uh, in, when I talk about the biggest competition, it's always habit. Uh, the things that's how people have been doing it and getting them to, to do it in a different way. And um, so that, so that's it. So again, my name is Till Brennan. Um, here we go. I've been with Interlinks uh, since May 2021. I uh, opened up the office in 2005 and uh, had the pleasure of working on multiple transactions and supporting the community. And uh, with that, we've been on the market since 1997. Uh, we do about 10,000, last year we had about 13,000 transactions on our platform, and uh, we've got about 45, or 48,000 new users that join our community and our platform on a monthly basis. Um, so I think that's kind of a quick overview of Interlinks. Quick show of hands, who knows, who knows Interlinks? Hey, there you go. Uh, I don't know if people on, online saw this as well, but it's, uh, it's a good, good testament as to uh, our position in the market. And um, so today we'll be focusing predominantly on the life cycle of, of, of NPLs and, and within the virtual data room. So a lot of it goes into preparation. We talked about that in the, in the um, panel discussion earlier in regards to how important it is to actually get information structured so that we can then go into a virtual data room. But there's a lot of preparation that needs involved. The other is then the big magical moment where you actually open up the data room for the, um, for the investors and for the buy side. And then we've got the, uh, the management of the due diligence process, the communication among bar parties, and making sure that that process is as streamlined as possible. And I just realized I have to, forgot my clicker. There you go. And, uh, and then last but not least is the compliance aspect. So with that, in that entire life cycle of the, uh, the process in, in the virtual data room is we want to focus on reporting as well as on the, um, on the compliance aspect in that whole process. So with that, going into deal preparation. Um, preparation is key, let's put it this way. And in order for you to be as flexible as possible during the transaction, you need to invest a lot of time and effort in the preparation of it. And that's where virtual data room can come into place as well. And we've got a whole best practice guide as to how to, you know, for example, the naming convention making sure that you can slice and dice the documents as required and making sure that you can then basically you know, prepare yourself for the investors and make sure that you also have the information that you need in order to make that available to the process. The other process in, or the other key element in that is the collection process. How do I get the information to me? And again, that's where a deal preparation aspect can come into play and making sure that you have the element of being able to to collect it and there, you know, you have to use tools like an Excel or something like that and make sure that you, for the various assets and various classes that you have, and making sure that you collect the information, you can structure it, and then you can make it available to the various parties in, in the process. And then going forward, you basically then have the moment of opening up the data room. And that is crucial in regards to the workflow processes that you want to set up. And again, it's getting the information that you have making sure that you then make it available in the data room. And you may have multiple re review processes within that. So you may be working with advisors, you may be working with the others, uh, other parties involved. Um, redaction process is also very important. Um, we'll get to that in a second. And you know, which documents do you want to redact, which ones not, and, um, and that will then basically help you in making sure that you set up your workflows and processes accordingly. And, the big element there is also the utilization of a Q&A tool so that you can actively engage with the multiple parties in that and making sure that you then, you know, the aim of the game is that you want the highest valuation of, the pro of, of what you're selling and, and, and you want to close the transaction as quickly as possible. So and that's exactly where, for example, Q&A and other tools within a virtual data room can support you and that's a key element of, of what you should be looking for and what you want to do. Um, the other aspect is the ongoing uploading of it. So the transaction will go on, you will have a Q&A, additional documentation will be requested, 
And that's the ability to then basically, based on the permissioning and making sure that you have that set up correctly in the, virtual, in the various groups, is to then make sure that you then have the element of, of uploading the documents and going forward. I'm looking at my colleague right now who's hopefully giving me the nod of that I'm saying the right things. <laughs> so, um, and and the, the last element or key element that you have in this um, equation is compliance and making sure that you have an audit trail. Um, that's mainly to mitigate your risk. Um, there, no, sorry. There you go, I need to get better at this. Um, and uh, basically to mitigate your risk in the process and making sure that you have that, um, that, that element of, of a, um, that element of, of assurance at the end of the transaction so that there is, no, um, there is no fallout in regards to anything that you have in there. The other that, yeah, aspect that you may have is also for compliance and then also the, the ability to store and archive the information for, um, for compliance purposes within the organization or other aspects as well. Um, one big element that we have is, is, is redaction. So we see that with a lot of transactions that we've now been doing in the last couple of, uh, last 12 months, um, that the requirements for redaction is important, right? In order to fulfill GDPR compliance and in order to fill other regulations, you need to, for example, redact PII information. So what we saw is that a lot of organizations do that themselves, either through the advisors, law firms, or through the organizations themselves. So that's when we started to look at redaction capabilities. We had a basic redaction tool. You know, it fulfilled its need. But what we wanted to figure out is how can we actually supercharge the process and apply AI to it so that the, there's a more assisted process of redacting and identifying information within a data room uh, that's related to PII. And that's the ability then to create your, your, your categories. But more importantly, as you go on in the process, is to unredact the information. So that's always a big ch challenge, is that if you have a document that you have redacted, you scan it, you upload it, now you want to provide an unredacted version of the document, you actually have to re-upload a new document into a virtual data room. And with the redaction tools that we then have, is that the ability to then actually unredact on the fly as you go along in the process and going forward. So, there are two things, or a couple of things that bring you to bring is, is one is it enables you to manage your resources. It helps you to go to market quicker. Um, you know, we save time, we save a lot of time. So again, it's AI assisted redaction. So we do a lot of the automation process beforehand. There is still a human review process that you need to, that you need to go through. Um, but basically these are the, the elements that you can bring. And, and it's a machine learning. So we, we just keep getting better and better in regards to identifying PI or other information that you want to hide, uh, not hide, but actually redact. Um, so if you look at the redaction process, um, very simple. You basically add your document, you, you identify the, the categories that you want to apply, and then that enables you to then, oh, I'm getting the card. Uh, okay. uh, and that basically uh, enables you to scan the documents and then with that OCR process, we basically do a recognition and the AI then identifies the PII information that you have, first name, last name, email addresses, company names, whatever you have. And it will then create a list of what has been redacted. And if I want to redact Till or unredact Peter, that's then identified, but that gives me the flexibility to then redact and create new versions of a, of a document as I go along in the process. So those are basically the, the, the key advantages that we, we bring to the market or, or what you should expect from a virtual data room provider. Um, we are in the middle. We're in the center of, of most of the transactions. You got the sell side, you got the buy side. Um, and in most of the times we are in the middle in, in trying to facilitate the transaction so that it closes as quickly as possible, to be as efficient as possible, and uh, to basically support you and, and uh, the team in, in your NPL transaction. So, I think I pretty much went through this. Uh, Claudia is giving in the nod, uh, but I think I'll give it on to the next uh, to the next speaker and go from there. All right, thank you.